Well, hey there, Steffi Funk here with Urban Shamanism, and I'm trying something a little different today on my video. I received some feedback. Um, it was some criticism, actually, that my videos were hard to watch because they were so scripted, and it felt like you guys were being read to, like you were um, like preschool children. So... Uh, yeah, that definitely uh, stung a bit, I won't lie, and I'm willing to take the mana of that, the information that's inside of that, and try something different today. So I don't have the scripted. I do have notes because if I don't have notes, this video will go on for like a half an hour, and I respect your time way too much for that. Um, so let me know below after I get done with this video if you prefer this format or the other and I am open to your feedback. But it's really interesting that that happened right before I was about to make this video because this video is the fourth of our seven series about the seven fear dragons. And today's fear dragon is actually the arrogance dragon or also known as the judgment dragon. So, um, somebody judged me, which actually spurred my self-deprecation dragon, as I shared with you guys last week, that's my number three dragon. And, um, and it's interesting because all of these dragons are on axes. So for example, the self-sabotage and greed dragon are on the same axis. And then the self-deprecation and judgment dragon are on the same axis the martyrdom and the uh, impatience dragon are on the same axis. We'll talk about those in the next couple of weeks. And then finally, there's the stubborn dragon, which just sits out all by itself um, and can slide into any of them. But on the axis, the two dragons play with each other a lot. So for example, if I have self dep which I do, um, I'll I'll potentially then slide into judgment and like turn around and be like, I can't believe you said that to me about my videos, right? So, so it's not like judgment's my primary, but they play with each other. And then, um, or for example, I got judged and now I'm in self dep right? So taking full responsibility for that and, and recognizing that there's information in this for me. And I think that's really important as business owners or anybody who is putting themselves out there in the world, because I think one of the main things that we are most afraid of in being big, being extraordinary, is being vulnerable to attack and vulnerable to judgment. So this is a really good process for me to come back into my own knowing that all I can do is the best I can do and just trusting my heart to lead me, the you know, the right way and trusting that maybe spirit had a message for me inside of that and ultimately remembering that I'm safe to trust spirit no matter what. So um, with that though I do want to get into the judgment dragon today. So the judgment dragon is actually I want to tell you guys about what it's um, what fear it's hiding, also um, how it might show up in your life, why this dragon is particularly destructive and also an inner shaman practice for dealing with it. Okay, so the first thing is that the judgment dragon is actually a fear of being judged. Okay, so it's a little bit paradoxical. So you tend to hit first so that you don't get hit, right? It's like a way of like closing others off or preventing intimacy um, because those who have the judgment dragon or the arrogance dragon as it's known are generally really afraid of intimate relationships. Um, it's very other focused or outer focused, meaning it tends to blame the other, um, and it keeps us off of the inner work, right? So it's like, ugh, like we're, you know, we're projecting outward, like, I can't believe they're doing that. Well, then we're not in here looking at our stuff. And if, as you've totally heard before, that which we judge tends to actually be something inside of ourselves that we don't like, or something inside of ourselves that we're not comfortable with, or, um, you know, there's information in our judgments about what we're actually feeling inside. Like the inner child inside of us is really feeling some sort of way, some sort of wounded. So we strike with that attack of the judgment, right? So it's like, can we ask, what is that? What is that that I'm really feeling here? Is it inadequacy, insecurity? Um, is it something I actually do myself that I don't like? Right, so there's really good information in there. 
Uh, let's see. Okay, here's the other interesting thing about judgment is it's actually energetic. So it creates what are called hooks in other people's auras. So when you judge someone, you're actually putting a hook in their aura, which kind of sucks, right? But also it's actually attaching you to them. <laughs> so it's not, uh, it, it's actually doing the opposite. If you're trying to like create some distance, you're actually like hooking in. Um, so there's that to know energetically. And then the other person has to do all the, the clearing and the protecting of all the hooks in their energy field, right? And that's actually especially important for you to do if you're something of a public figure to be regularly clearing your aura of the cords and the hooks and the things like that because it can get really draining. Um, and it can start to feel like a black hole and it can just put holes in the aura so that you're not feeling as solid and short up in your space. Um, and really, at the end of the day, it just sucks <laughs> because we're all one, right? We know that. We at least know that, even if we don't know that. So if you're judging the other, you really are judging yourself, right? And so you're actually perpetuating your own fear of being judged with your judgment because it proves to you that, oh yeah, people judge. Look, I'm judging. And you're actually judging yourself, making you um, feel less safe in relationships, and with yourself as opposed to more safe, which is what it's trying to do. It's like a defense mechanism or coping mechanism that's like trying to keep you safe, but in actuality, it makes you feel less safe and more vulnerable to judgment and attack because you're the one judging. So you prove it's a self-fulfilling prophecy and you prove that yes, people do indeed judge. So here's the, the ticket with dealing with this dragon is to drop the messenger and get the message. So if I am annoying someone with my beingness, that person who's annoyed and like being like, Ugh, whatever about her, they get to just say, okay, Stephanie is the messenger of something inside of me that gets to be looked at. So they drop me as the messenger and they get the message. They feel the felt sense of where they feel that in their body. And the other piece of this, I would say, and then just breathe into that and just ask it what information it has for you. Like, what are you really feeling beneath the judgment? That can be very eye-opening. The other piece of this is to just ask it. It's like a racket, right? There's something inside of it. Like when we judge, there's some sort of payoff that we're getting from that judgment. For example, <coughs> oh, for example, if I judge, this is a hypothetical, right? I have a lot of dragons. This doesn't tend to be my primary unless I go into self depth and then I'm like, well, fuck you then. Um, but if I judge, perhaps I'm judging because the payoff is then I don't have to be big and I don't have to be extraordinary, right? Because for a couple of reasons. One, I'm so other focused or outer focused that I don't have to pay any attention to the inner work or, well, look, people judge and there's fear of attack. So better not be big, better not put myself out there, better not be vulnerable, better not be extraordinary. So then can you see why that would then add up to, well, screw that person for putting themselves out there, right? And then it just keeps you stuck in this cycle of like smallness or safety, which isn't really safe. Um, it's all sort of just the illusion of the, the judgment dragon or the arrogance dragon trying to keep you small and stuck. So, um, and there might be other reasons. I mean, that's a self inquiry. So that's your inner shaman practice is first, just ask yourself, is this a dragon that you deal with? And if so, what is it really masking on the inside? And every time you sense yourself judging, can you Find the nutrition in it, the spiritual nutrition in it of what it's really trying to show you. And then try to find the payoff that you're getting from it as well. What is the racket that you're in about it? What does it absolve you from responsibility of, right? Because there's some way that you're letting yourself off the hook of resp personal responsibility by judging. So take a look at that. And with that, I will be back with you next week talking about the martyrdom dragon also known as the victimhood dragon and i've got a guidebook for you it's an ebook i made called the seven fear dragons and how to slay them you can get that by going to my website at staffyfunk.com forward slash fear dragons one word make sure you get the spelling right and um at the end of the day this is all for us right even the judgment of me is for me there's information in that 
for me. So um, standing for you, standing for your bigness, standing for your greatness, standing for your extraordinary, no matter what. I'll see you next week.